Dimensions and Metadata are two settings that can be found in the Render Output tab. This is labeled with the printer icon in the Properties Editor. Dimensions simply refers to the resolution of the final output image. For example, most HD images and videos are 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. You can set your resolution by left-clicking the number and manually typing a new one, or you can left-click drag to slide the value left or right as you see fit. It's important to know that when you change your output resolution, the shape of your camera will change to match the aspect ratio of your output resolution. This percentage value represents your ability to reduce the resolution very quickly for, say, test renders. If you want a 1080 final output, but you want your next few renders to be test footage only, you can reduce the resolution with a percentage factor to minimize render times and file size. The aspect slider is simply another way to quickly multiply your X or Y resolution values by a scalar. Render region is a checkbox that is very important if you want to only render a small region of your camera. However, you'll notice that if you check this box, nothing actually happens or changes, except when you go into camera view, your camera is now outlined in a dotted red line. That's because currently your entire camera is selected as the region you want rendered. To change this region, simply go to the view menu, go to view regions and select render region. This will give you the ability to draw a rectangular area on your screen to specify which part of your frame you want rendered. This will become represented by the dotted red line. For hotkey users, simply press Ctrl B to begin drawing your render rectangle. It's important to note that if you draw a render region with the render region checkbox turned off, it will automatically check this box for you. To clear your render region and simultaneously turn off the render region checkbox, Simply go back into the View menu, go to View Regions, and select Clear Render Region. For hotkey users, simply press Ctrl-Alt-B. Crop to Render Region is a checkbox that will reduce your image dimensions to match the render region dimensions. If you don't have this checked, the final output image will not be reduced, and will still be the same dimensions as it would be if it rendered the whole image. However, only the rendered region will be visible, with the rest of the frame being transparent. The frame start and end values are the same values you see on your timeline. They are synced, so changing the start and end frames of your playback region in one place will affect the other. The step value will affect how many frames you step forward before rendering the next frame. By default, the value is 1, which is the minimum value. This means that it will render every single frame. However, if you decide you only want to render every 2 frames or every 10th frame in the timeline, you can specify that here. This does not affect viewport playback, however. Frame rate is simply how many frames per second are meant to be played during playback. This can affect both viewport playback and rendered animation playback. Time remapping is a setting that will help you very quickly retime your animation to be faster or slower stretching or squashing the existing keyframes based on the ratio you provide. Time remapping is not very commonly used, but can be used to quickly retime your animation to be faster or slower at render. Stereoscopy, roughly meaning two eyes, is basically the thing that makes 3D glasses necessary at 3D movies. It's a big topic, but to create a stereo 3D output, you'll need to enable this checkbox. You'll immediately notice options for the left and right eyes, which allow you to specify your preferred suffix for the file names, as each eye will need to be a separate image. Fun fact, you can also go into camera view to see how your scene might look in 3D, assuming you have some basic red and cyan 3D glasses. Metadata is another output setting that allows you to include additional information and stamp it onto your output file. If we open up this category here, we can see there is date, time, render time, frame number, etc. You also have the option to include a custom note. Now, right now, if we render our scene with the F12 hotkey, you'll see Blender render out a simple image of our camera perspective. However, there is currently no metadata visible. To show the metadata and include it in the output file, simply check the Burn Into Image checkbox. Feel free to tweak the settings there, such as font size and transparency, to your liking. I hope this video gives you a good idea of how the dimensions and metadata settings affect your render. We'll go more into the file output settings in the next video.